everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing a little bit more flyout, and today in flyout we're going to be building a four-engine seaplane, and for the first time technically this is a passenger aircraft or like a commercial aircraft. Uh, I, I could have made this a bomber. Uh, I didn't. I don't know. It didn't feel right. It, it just fit as, a, as like a commercial thing. But um, yeah, we're going to be building a seaplane. Think along the lines of the PBY, the Boeing 314 Clipper, uh, Short Sunderland, uh, H8K. Those are probably the most notable examples I can think of. You know what I'm thinking of. Uh, seaplanes. They're fun. Um, and we're going to be trying our hand at them. And I think this this is actually a build that worked out quite well. You've already seen it on the thumbnail. Um, and, uh, you know, you click through, which is lovely of you. Uh, and you're lovely. I hope you're having a great day as well. Especially you, James. I know you're watching. You're doing great, man. I know things have been hard. They'll get better. I really appreciate you, James. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you stick around as well. I love you, James. Anyway, if your name isn't James, uh, just put, pretend I said your name in that segment, and I hope you feel better about it afterwards. Anyway, um, what on earth happened there? I feel like I just blacked out for the last, like, 15 seconds of my life and said some words that I either will regret or I won't regret. I'll find out what I just said when I'm editing this video, um, as if I'm not editing it right now. I am... Well, this is part of the editing process. Goodness me, we've really got off onto a tangent on this one, haven't we? Uh, hello, if you're new to the channel, by the way. This is what happens. Um, oh my goodness! Okay, right. Let's get back on topic. Seaplanes. These things were all the rage in the early days of aviation. Back before commercial aviation had spread to a point where you could have a runway near enough close to every single large city, it was very difficult to get large numbers of people through the skies to another destination, but it was getting to the point where it was convenient and affordable to do so. So, instead of spending a lot of money building airports, which some people definitely did, companies decided that they would cut out the middleman. Who needs an airport when you can just use the river that most cities are built on? Can you think of a big city that isn't built near a river? There's probably one or two, but not many, I can guarantee you that much. Unless they're in America. Little bit of an exception there. You guys just... I don't know, you like building big cities in deserts? Um, like Vegas? Sure, I guess. It worked out. Um, so congrats on that one, but most European cities, especially, built on rivers. Um, Berlin, London, just to name two of them. Um, and so, they would take a regular seaplane, which had existed for an extremely long time, and they'd make it ca passenger capable, and, and these things boomed in popularity because it was much, much cheaper for air carriers to just buy a seaplane, service big cities that didn't have an airport yet, than to fund the construction of an airport and then fly regular planes to it. It just made sense back in the day. And that is roughly the market that this plane would be competing in. So you can imagine this thing being built just before World War II, towards the end of the dominance of the seaplane, really. So it probably, frankly, it probably wouldn't catch on. <laughs> Which maybe isn't something I should be admit admitting as I build it, but, um, oh well, why not? Uh, just don't tell the stockholders. But, uh, yes, are the stockholders my patrons? I, I'm on Patreon, by the way. I, I haven't said that in a long time, so I'll take this opportunity to say that. I'm on Patreon if you want to support me. It's in the description below. But... On another topic, uh, if I'm not shilling for a split second, um, Patreon members, do you consider yourself my shareholders? Are, do you own a share in my channel from being a patron? Is that a thing? I don't think that's a thing. Could we make it a thing? Would, I be would my channel become an investment and then I grow because of people wanting to invest in a new investment opportunity? This is, this is sounding great. I don't know. Hit me up, uh, financial consultants, in the chat. What on earth? 
this is one of those tangents again. I was telling you about seaplanes. Yes, seaplanes. Um, frankly, they were all the rage. They were everywhere. Um, and for good reason, to be fair, for, for very good reason. Uh, it was also in the days where airports were starting to pop up every here and there, a lot of them would be just dirt strips on the ground. So being a seaplane, essentially just a boat, you didn't need to worry about ground pressure. One thing that would happen if you were a particularly heavy aircraft landing on a runway is you would just crush the runway under your weight. This is quite a commonly reported thing. Uh, Douglas was working on a gigantic heavy bomber just before the B-29 entered development, and that thing just fell through the floor. There was not a runway that they could find that could hold up the weight of that thing. So if you could just land on the ocean, it doesn't necessarily matter where you land, it's going to be able to support your weight so long as you have positive buoyancy, which is fairly easy for an aircraft to achieve because they've got to be pretty damn light to achieve flight. That rhymed. Amazing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, that's why seaplanes were great. That's why we're building a seaplane today. Seaplanes are cool, and they don't really get done anymore these days. You don't see, like, jet seaplanes, which be kind of interesting, um, but for various very good reasons. <laughs> Typically, when you look at uh, the way that things are done and you question why are they done that way, it's normally because somebody's had a good long think about it. <laughs> and unfortunately, seaplanes are one of those things that we had a good long time to consider and we decided that uh, no not particularly practical anymore, which it's a shame because there's something endearing about a, a plane that lands on water. It's it's just, it's vibes, you know? It, it's vibes. Would you not feel cooler arriving in your destination landing on water than landing on a runway? I know I would. And so, there you go. We should bring back the seaplane. I'll start building them myself. Myself? That's not a phrase. Myself. Let's, uh, let's, if I hit 100,000 subscribers, I will build a seaplane in real life. Um, I'm not going to do that, just to clarify. Uh, <laughs> I have previously said that once I hit 100,000 subscribers, I would start uh, producing tanks in real life. Uh, that is also not going to happen uh, unless, I don't know, I get a lot of money from somewhere. Uh, 100,000 subscribers, that will not get me enough money to build one tank, let alone start producing them en masse. Uh, you need a lot of money to build tanks, and, and frankly, uh, the way to get that ain't YouTube. Uh, <laughs> this is a tangent, again! But, you know what, some of you enjoy the tangents, and that's, that's the glory of this thing. Now, chapters on videos should allow you to skip these things. Uh, I, I'm still working out how to do them for flyout videos because in Sprocket it works very well because we have these nice segments which are the little levels that you do when you're going through the game. And if you've not watched my Sprocket videos and you're here just for flyout, give Sprocket a try. It's a really cool game, but I imagine most of you have seen Sprocket, so I'm probably barking up the wrong tree here. Um, but yes, uh, cha yeah, chapters. I don't really know how to split up these videos. I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to have the building segment, which is obviously going to be the largest chapter, uh, then the testing segment, and then just the landing segment. You need three chapters in order for them to actually apply on a video, so hopefully that should do the job, roughly. The main point is it's much easier for people to skip through the uh, building segment at the start if they want to, because, I mean, especially today, it's a long one, boys. We're here for the long haul. It's, it's about 14 and a half minutes of me just building this seaplane, and um, that's, that's sped up and with quite a lot cut out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the general shape, I don't cut out a lot, but uh, actually getting this thing to work is its own challenge in Flyout. Um, if you are looking into getting Flyout when it releases on Steam, has a store page by the way, uh, do be prepared to be utterly awful at building aircraft at first. This game is not easy. Um, <laughs> it really is just designing an aircraft, basically. 
the physics are somewhat realistic, the designing is very arduous at times, and the engine statistics are a little bit uh, on the uh, real side. It's not the uh, the granularity of like a, a full-on engine simulator, but there's there's a lot to play around with, and you can really tweak an engine to uh, however you you like, particularly. Um, however, my criticism remains stone. If you're watching this, please bring back the button that lets me set all of the materials on the aircraft at once. Oh my god, I miss it so much. <laughs> I It's probably gone for a technical reason, I understand. Please bring it back if you can. I loved that button. I miss it so much. <laughs> I'm really bad at using the painting tool, so it saved me, uh, saved me building ugly things, and so here is my formal request to have it returned. Uh, but yeah... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, design inspirations. Let's talk them. Uh, what was I going for when I was building this thing? This probably should have been one of the first segments that I said, to be entirely honest, but here we are, uh, like 11 minutes into this building segment doing it. Fuselage, PBY-5, Catalina, a beautiful aircraft. If you don't know what the Catalina is, where have you been for the last century, man? The Catalina has such a storied history. There are still models of it flying, airworthy today, doing actual work. Not just in a museum somewhere, actually working. And, and that is a astounding. And supposedly, supposedly, Consolidated, the company that made it, are going to make a new version with turboprops uh, in, you know, current day. Uh, very strongly doubt that that's going to happen, um, but it was reported, so I'm going to report it to you. Uh, that's, yeah, uh, that would be cool, but I don't think it's it's happening. Um, engines. Catalina has two. This has four. Catalina has a parasol wing, uh, kind of extended above the fuselage with a big connecting pole. We just have it mounted on the top half of the fuselage, uh, and then four engines on there. Uh, that is inspired, inspired, it's, it's inspired by a lot of things. A lot of bombers had this arrangement, but specifically what I was thinking of when I built it was the Boeing Clipper, the 314, uh, and that also inspires the tail of this thing. So this is kind of like, um, a, a, an in-between of the two. It's a smaller version of the 314 with aspects of the Catalina's design philosophy going into it, if you want a kind of overall description of what we've built here today. Um, but, you know, maybe that's not what your headcanon is. What, what do you think this plane would be used for? What do you think it would be called? What do you think it would be... Uh turned into in the future? Where do you think, would you think it would succeed? Do you think it would flop horribly? Do you think it would even work? Any of these questions spark a little bit of interest. Let me know in the comments. It's always good. It's always good having your guys' input. Sometimes I see people writing entire walls of lore for a tank or a plane. That is crazy cool. Um, I read all the comments, uh, which a lot of you have tried to test me on that one. I said it before, and you were like, do you actually read all the comments? If you left the comment saying, do you actually read the comments, you currently have a reply from me saying yes of something to the sort. Uh, and I can say that with 100% certainty, because uh, I read all of the comments. There's not that many. Uh, it's not that hard to keep up with, guys. You can believe me, I swear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, okay, the building segment's actually nearly done here. I, th I thought this would never end. We've gone on so many tangents. It's been one hell of a journey. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And if you have, why don't, why don't you leave a like right now? Because, I mean, doesn't that plane look a little bit cool? Okay, and here we have our flying boat. It's so big that it's kind of hard to actually fit it on the screen here. <laughs> Um, so, we have four very powerful radial engines going on here. We have a kind of blue underside. I don't know if that's going to look any good. Uh, I've kind of put some windows and doors on it. I don't know. To be honest, uh, 
The paint job on this is pretty bare bones, uh, and I can explain. Uh, if I want to change the material of these wings, which is something that I tend to do quite a lot when I'm actually painting these things, uh, at the moment what you have to do is go into here and then copy and paste and, and paste and paste and paste and paste and uh, you get the point. You'll you'll be there for hours. It takes a long time at the moment. Please put the material all <laughs> function back in. Please put the all material function back in. Oh, that button was just lovely and I, I miss it so. <laughs> but uh, regardless, uh, we have a couple of wheels on this thing, which isn't hugely logical, but they are necessary for the purposes of actually taking off from the ground. I've been air spawning this thing, but uh, I want to give a shot of actually taking this thing off from a proper runway. So uh, let's let's launch it from the uh, default airfield here. Oh, goodness me. We are bouncing around quite a lot here. The suspension is complaining, but I reckon we should be able to uh, overcome that with a little bit of engine here. Um, we are apps. Oh, we've lost a rudder. Oh, no. <laughs> here we go. Okay, this time we're going to do a little bit better on the old takeoff. We're going to take a fair amount of time to actually get up to speed, I reckon, but we should eventually reach the kind of speeds where we can lift this big old lady off the ground and we have both of our small rudders at the back there uh, 180 not going to be quick enough I reckon we're going to be looking more at like 400 kilometers an hour for this kind of an aircraft so uh, well not 400 sorry 300 is probably about our range or right now actually why not uh, okay sure um I mean, we do have big wings, to be fair. They are particularly large for the purposes of uh, taking off with all the drag of water. That is not how I told that landing gear to retract. It's going the wrong way. That's frustrating. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that. That is that is such an eyesore. Okay, bear with me here. Ugh, what on earth? Um, okay, this time it decided to spawn me very high up. Uh, but with no speed, so yeah, okay, that was odd. Okay, we've spawned on the runway this time. Let's properly get up into the air without glitched out landing gears, without glitching out and falling out of the sky. We've got it. We've got this, right? No problem. Level two flaps. Uh, give her a little bit of steering input to keep her on the runway, and then we should... Be able to lift off gracefully from the ground like a, uh, well, a bit like a whale, to be honest. <laughs> Not that whales tend to lift off from the ground, but we look a little bit like a whale. Uh, there's not a lot else that this can really be described as. I don't think it looks bad. Um, maybe not the easiest thing to build. At the moment, uh, I'm still learning these big planes and kind of uh, making them feel like a full, complete thing. I, I definitely think smoothing off these engine pods into the fuselage a bit more would be a help uh, into the actual appearance of this thing. Um, and I need to find out how to paint properly. Uh, I find this painting tool, it's very flexible. I'm not very good with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to work out what I'm doing with that and uh, get a little bit better with it. But um, as you can see, we're, get we're getting up some altitude, we're getting up some speed. And uh, as this is kind of more of a commercial aircraft than anything based on, I guess, our paint job here, I feel like this is a perfectly acceptable kind of speed for this thing to be going. Um, now, you cannot land in water in this game, unfortunately. I would love to demonstrate the actual seafaring capabilities of this thing, but, um, yeah, frankly, there is, there's no seafaring capabilities, uh, in this game. So, <laughs> you're just gonna have to use your imagination. But hey, if you think about it, this is technically the first four-engine plane I've built. It's not a bomber, but it's a four-engine plane. Um, perhaps... I mean, we could easily modify this thing to have a bomb bay and drop some bombs. Um, maybe a future time. Uh, I am 
very rapidly running out of time today. This thing has taken me a very long time to get even to this stage. <laughs> it's very graceful just kind of flying around like this. I'm, I'm, th there's not much for me to really show you, but uh, I, I think you can probably get an appreciation of just... This is, this is very relaxing, you know? I feel like I could do this for an extremely long time, especially if I had, like, a flight stick. And I could just really gently put throttle inputs in, put roll inputs in to just kind of nudge this plane in the correct direction. It, this is, this is chill. <laughs> you know, normally we're building things that go, like, Mach 3, which, yeah, I mean, there's a joy in that, sure, but... This is lovely. This is so, so calming up here. Apart from the four massive radial engines, which are just constantly going. Talking about radial engines, these things, uh, they're not particularly fuel efficient. And still, we have uh, three hours and 47 minutes of fuel in this thing, which is, uh, that's quite a lot. <laughs> we could go quite the distance with this thing, I imagine. All right, just because I'm curious and not because it's particularly necessary, we're going to do a straight line speed test. Now, this could take quite a while to get up to any kind of uh, reasonable high speeds because, yeah, lots of drag, but um, <laughs> we'll see. Um, perhaps we can just eke out maybe 400, 410 kilometers an hour out of this thing. It, I mean, it's never going to break the sound barrier, let's put it that way. So the top speed of the Boeing 314 Clipper, which is a much larger flying boat, was uh, only 338 kilometers an hour. So at the moment, we're at 426, but that's in a slight dive. It looks like our top speed is about 420. Um, what is a more comparable flying boat? Maybe... I mean, the H6K is definitely earlier. The short Sunderland is too big. Um... May, I mean, the Catalina's only got two engines, but we're probably in the same kind of weight bracket as a Catalina. The PBY-5A could go a maximum of 315 kilometers an hour. We are absolutely smashing that out of the water. Let's look at something a little bit more powerful like a, a Kawas... Gosh, how do you pronounce that? Kawanishi? H8K? That had a maximum speed of 467 kilometers an hour. So, okay, we're, we're somewhere in between uh, like the early slow big American flying boats and the H8K. That's all right. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely room for bigger engines on this thing. They're, they're not exactly Titanic engines. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can do just a little bit of a close to the ground flying here, uh, and see what kind of maneuvers we can pull off in this bad boy. Probably nothing to write home about, all things considered, because I think this plane uh, loaded weight is about 30 tons, I think. Which, it, that's, that's heavy. It's heavy. It's a very heavy plane. <laughs> oh, I hit the ground there. Uh, oh dear. That's, a, you know what, that's fine. And there you go. It's durable. It's very durable. It can hit the ground and survive no problem. That's exactly what you want from a flying boat. You know, they've got they've got to survive some rough landings on the ocean. It's perfect. The roll rate is definitely weaker than the pitch, but the pitch isn't that much stronger, all things considered. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe the fire department would want some of these, you know? US US fire department, you get a lot of uh, a lot of Seaplanes serving as f oh oh I've had a small accident oh I'm sorry oh no oh oh goodness me oh no oh buddy are you, are you okay that looked nasty I, I I can't lie all right I got a little bit carried away and now there's three folk in the cockpit and a little door in the back 
Now, I feel like if I really let myself get carried away, I could seriously spend like 10 hours just building the interior of this thing and adding like passenger areas and a little bar. Um, I'm not going to do that because I do have other things to do. <laughs> like my actual real life job. Um, so we're just going to leave it here. Um, so we're going to do a little fly around. We're going to try and land this thing, see how uh, controllable it is when coming in for landing. And uh, I think this has been a vastly successful build. I really, really like this thing. Uh, and I hope you do too. We're just going to build up a little bit of altitude with some funky maneuvers here. Yeah, the agility of this thing does leave something to be desired. Uh, but you know what? It's not meant to be agile. I think for all its uh, lack of agility, which normally is a bit of a problem when you're landing, it's actually fairly controllable. Um, like, the inputs, you don't get a good roll rate, but in terms of actually knowing what roll you're going to be at, it stays at that kind of, uh, that roll angle. It, it's not constantly swapping around on you, and that's probably because it's 30 tons. <laughs> One thing that could be difficult about landing this is obviously it wasn't designed to really have a traditional landing gear. We have these floats which are roughly where the center of mass is, um, but the wheels have to be on them. So the wheels are also consequentially near the center of mass, uh, which is going to make it very, very easy to tip back onto our tail. But uh, luckily, because of our arrangement, we should just be able to slam on the brakes and our wheel at the front should keep us from tipping over forwards and uh, we shouldn't tip over backwards if we're braking hard. All we have to do is get lined up with ye old runway out here. Okay, as a result of my somewhat questionable piloting skills, we have somewhat overshot our flight path here, but uh, that's not too bad. We're going to drop down the flaps, bleed away a little bit of this speed, because luckily in this game, uh, they don't fall off. <laughs> so we can uh, we can kind of use them willy-nilly here. Uh, let's just lower the angle real quick so we don't stall out before we reach the runway. Going to give her some beans as well. Here we go, uh, right, flaps back all the way out, and let's extend the old landing gear. We have a leftward crosswind to attend contest with here, uh, which shouldn't be too bad. 11 kilometers an hour, not that quick. Gonna have to give her quite a lot more juice here. We are definitely struggling to uh, keep this thing in the air. Um, so I'm learning where its stall speed roughly lays. I need to just... Oh, this would be so much easier with a flight stick. <laughs> oh, no, that's a lot of dive. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. That's also a lot of dive. But if we can just... Oh, it's a bit of a rough landing, but it is a landing. Uh, cut the throttle, cut the throttle. And hold the brakes. Yep. There we go. Okay. I'll take that. And eventually, we should come to a stop before we go off the edge of the runway, maybe. Not quite. <laughs> Parked up. Perfectly fine for the next people to use it. Yeah, this front wheel needs a, a little bit more steering angle, I think. <laughs> it doesn't do a lot. But, um, yeah. I mean... Probably one of our most successful landings to date. Definitely one of our most successful landings to date. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. I know I did, so uh, if you did, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe on this channel, on this video, on this everything. And I think I've forgotten to paint that left pontoon. Oh, well, that's staying like that now. I bet some of you already noticed that and have been screaming at me, and I, I can only apologize for that. <laughs> but anyway, if you enjoyed this one, please have a like, favorite, and or subscribe. Favorite? You can't do that. Uh, but <laughs> God, I'm getting carried away. Bye! And as always, a huge thank you to my aforementioned patrons. Badge of Werner, Potato, Kendra, 135, Cody, and DJ, Peace, Kaboon, Gamma, Sena, 2, 9, Seth, Catch, Hester, Catch, 6, 7, 1, Last, 7, 11, Mark, Molly, Vesson, Nicholas K, Russell, Bokken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, The Canadian Emperor, Zara, Shyman, Zite, Wolverine. That must be a record speed.